Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Coaster Chow, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and welcome to this theme park newsroom update. This is a big one today because we're going to be looking at the final finishing touches and preparations around Alton Towers Resort ahead of next weekend's, well, this upcoming weekend's opening day 2022. Now, as you guys already know from the community posts, I will be there on the opening day of Alton Towers on Saturday the 19th of March 2022. I will be vlogging, so if you do see me, don't be afraid to say hi. Um, it'd be great to see as many of you there as possible for the opening day of Alton Towers. Um, and I think it's just going to be a really, really wonderful day. So. Overall, this is going to be a very exciting one because uh, we're going to be looking at all the preparations taking place across the park, including new area paint tops, new refreshing elements, new uh, sort of little touches here and there, the new attractions finished off, some interesting work around Nemesis of Terror, and much, much more. So please like the video if you loved it, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, subscribe if you're new around here, click the notification bell so you never shoot your video. Check the description down below for social media links and the Google Forms link where you and the camera can submit your own video ideas. And for now, guys, let's have a look at exactly what is going on at Alton Towers getting ready for the opening day of the season next weekend. Let's take a look. So you know what? We may as well start with where most of the new attractions are happening. It's Sea BB's Land. Now, before we even get into the new attractions being finished off, Let's have a look at some other updates around CBeebies Land. Now, all the photos you're seeing in this video are from Tower Street. Link to their social media in the description down below. And the, all the pictures, all the credit goes to Tower Street. So, massive shout out to Tower Street. Thank you very much for letting me use the images today. So, let's start off with CBeebies Land in general. We have a brand new entrance portal currently under wraps. Uh, you, can start to, you can sort of start to see some of it there. You've got these sort of tree branches in front of the original tree branches for the uh, Guess Set Go Treetop Adventure, which of course is the uh, current, well used to be current from the looks of it, uh, CBB's Land entrance portal, but it looks like a brand new one will be built uh, with these two tree branches just in front of them. Uh, we also have new banner posts and new flooring around the area. Uh, now, the new banners, which are on your screen now, the new banner posts, Fan Dabby Dozy, um, these are, uh, these look brilliant, don't they? Nice coloured yellow, uh, just part of the whole refresh of CBB sign. And on your screen now, Fan Dabby Dozy, just outside or opposite uh, Postman Pat's Parcel Post, is some new flooring on the floor, some stars, some rainbow colouring uh, ish, and also some musical notes, so a bit of a sing and dance uh, on that particular particular bit of the site. Now let's have a look at the new attractions for CBeebies Land opening this year. So starting off with Hey Dougie's Big Adventure Badge, of course this is the replacement to Tree Food Tom's Training Camp. We say replacement, it's kind of like half replacement, half refurbishment of the uh, of the area. And as you can see by the array of images going across your screen, uh, we have a lot of things going on. We've got uh, things like the big old uh, Hey Dougie themed sign over the construction fence, which you'll see in one of the images coming across the screen either now or later or before. Um, you know, you've got things like the clubhouse with the little, with the big, well, not a little slide, it's a big slide. Uh, so they're taking a lot of things into account with the slide there, which is uh, nice to see. Uh, going outside that clubhouse, you've got nice sort of nice tree theming going on. You've also got another building opposite the clubhouse slide uh, in a bit of scaffolding. So still a bit of work to do, but uh, looks ready to go. Hey Dougie's Big Adventure Badge, of course, opening on the opening day with the rest of the new attractions. Uh, we know that we got we got Jojo uh, uh, Grand, uh, Jojo, Jojo and Grand at home, uh, which is one of the new attractions. Now we don't have any updates from that, but we do have some updates from the third of the attractions, Andy's Adventures Dinosaur Dig. So let's take a look. So Andy's Adventures Dinosaur Dig, uh, the one of the three new attractions, the third of the three new attractions. Now from the outside, there isn't any major changes because of course this takes the former site of Mr. Bloom's allotment, which opened way back in 2014 when the CBB's Land area opened. Now Mr. Bloom's allotment, if you didn't know already, it was um, 
an interactive attraction, an, an outdoor interactive attraction, a uh, walkthrough attraction, and uh, it was all about learning about veg vegetables and, you know, things like that. So, you know, it, it was, you know, that was the main thing with CBB Land. It was, in, it was sort of interactive play. It was sort of learning through play. Um, and that was the, the big thing you took from CBB Land. It was interactive learning, but playing education. Um, now, this was used to, now, before Mr. Bloom's allotment, this used to be home to uh, the paddocks. Um, now, these were the old paddocks from the farmyard animals that hosted chickens, guinea pigs, and rabbits when they weren't part of the furry friends in the middle of the farmyard. When first introduced to the resort in 2007, these were the first animals to call the resort home since the foot and mouth crisis of 2002. And of course, it all closed at the end of 2013. So uh, obviously, you know, it has been quite a while. But Mr. Bloom's Lockman came in in 2014 when CBB's Land opened, and of course, we know the story. 2022, it was changed up. Now, of course, from the outside, it doesn't look like there's any changes, but of course, a couple of the images you're seeing on your screen uh, during this report shows uh, a new sign for the Avengers Dinosaur Deer. You can sort of see a new post, uh, sort of a new banner post next to it, a signpost or something interactive possibly next to it in terms of something to read, uh, for the kids to read. So, uh, looks very interesting uh, from an overhead point of view, but um, should be interesting to see what happens with these attractions um, when we actually, when people actually get to experience them. I will try my best to review the new attractions. I may get, I might try and find a quiet spot in the day on Saturday to experience these new these new family attractions. They're not my target audience, but when I see a new attraction, I want to review it. So I do want to review these brand new attractions on the opening day. But uh, let's get into then some more developments happening around Alton Towers over this closed period. And it's now down to go to Mutiny Bay, the other side of Tower Street. And let's head into the pirate area and see what's been happening. So there's been a nice refresh to Mutiny Bay, new planters, cleaned roofs, painted facades, and much, much more. Now, if you go up to Tower Street's Facebook page, below the first Mutiny Bay post, or the latest Mutiny Bay post, with the Heave Ho uh, being, you know, nicely landscaped and painted up, and you see the holes around Marauder's Mayhem's wall, uh, the Pirates Wanted sign with the Captain's Coffers arcade game, got an overhead shot, uh, of the courtyard that you can walk into, we can look via the sky ride as well. But below that post, there's actually a video uh, with Mutiny Bay having some new music with new speakers across the area. Now, please go to Tower Times, uh, sorry, Tower Street Facebook page to hear that video, listen to the music. I listened to it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, now, let's leave Mutiny Bay and let's go over to. Katanga Canyon with a little bit of an update on the Runway Mine Train. So just one photo then from the Runway Mine Train and it's brand new lights in the queue lines. Well, the, specifically the exit queue line. So this will this will help during the extended closing time days uh, when we get towards the, the autumn time and it gets darker as the day, it, it, you know, even if it's five o'clock, it might get darker and darker. So when the Runway Mine Train is operating at darker hours, the lights will very much come in handy, especially at Scarefest. I'd be excited. I think the lights will be used to its full advantage during Scarefest, and that's the main thing we need to watch out for with these brand new lights. But they're fantastic additions anyway. Gives the coaster a bit more light here, of course. The Mac-powered roller coaster that opened back in 1992 with Gloomy Wood and the Katanga Canyon area. Um, you know, it's a classic here at Alton Towers. It really is. And it's nice to see some extra TLC being given to the Runaway Mine Train. And by TLC, we don't mean tender loving care in this specific video. We mean towers loving care. Now, let's go over to some more work around the park. And let's go over to Forbidden Valley for two updates. First of all on Nemesis, and then we'll head over to Subterra. So Nemesis has had new steps and fences added over the winter period for easier access for ride maintenance and track and support inspection. That immediately means they've got all the steps in place ready for when they begin the refurbishment of Nemesis. Now for those of you who don't keep up to date with the latest news on Alton Towers, we know by now, we pretty much know by now, that Nemesis will have a major refurbishment 
um, at the park. Uh, we don't know when it will close. We don't know if it's going to be open for opening day. We pretty much, I think it's probably going to be open for opening day. Um, it might not do, you never know. But uh, we know that after this season, 2023 is questionable as to whether the ride will be open during that season because a lot of people are saying that 2024 will be the reopening year for its anniversary for the refurbished and retracted Nemesis. Um, so these steps, these new steps that have gone in, these new fences that have gone in uh, to allow easier access for maintenance of the ride and support inspection and jack inspection, that is the first step for me to say, they're putting the stuff in place, ready to, uh, you know, begin the work. Hopefully, towards the back end of this year, um, for the for the refurbishment of Nemesis, which seems to be the next major project, unless something's happening to its sister ride, which has not been operating for a good few years now, and that is Nemesis of Terror. So let's head up from Nemesis towards Sub Terror. So the final remains of Project 42 Scare Mace theming has been removed over this winter period, which again begs the question, could we see the return of Subterra? Now, obviously, I showed you a, a previous report from Alton Towers about the possible return Nemesis Subterra with the theming returning. However, we have another bit of updates here from Nemesis Subterra. Now, this first image on your screen right now is a sort of overlook uh, sort of past the fence um, We see we've got the new theming with the barrels which we spoke about last time, but then if you look across your screen now Found Abby dozy apart from a fire extinguisher and quite a lot of leaves on the path But and you know if you clear it up here and there, you know you see obviously you see at the back right at the back of the image the lift in motion sign the lift uh, now from the looks of it from the base of it. It looks like you know, this could be interesting. This could be really, really interesting. Um, now, one thing to note about Subterra, and this for me, um, I don't know. For, for me, from what I've seen from Scarefest description, I know a lot of people have said about Scarefest description about a brand new maze. Uh, and possibly people are saying the Subterra building will be the uh, home for the new maze. That is a possibility. I, I, I do get that. That is a possibility. Um, however, I think it's more than that. I personally believe it will be more than that. I think it's the right thing to do to bring back Subterra in some way or form. Maybe get a new uh, company. If the right system has been pulled apart to help other drop towers in the middle and chain, bring in another manufacturer to bring in a new dark ride drop system that will look similar to the old one. Um, to get that ride back up and running again because I think it'd be nice to see Subterra up and running again If it is up and running again next season, I don't think we will see the live actors I think the live actors with the budget and everything, you know, the budget cuts that Merlin were doing after the Smiler incident You know a few years ago now That for me I, th I think that's one thing they don't really want to do. I think they may invest in a lot of theming and a lot of things to make it look like there's live actors, but maybe there won't be any live actors in this particular one. I think it's maybe a couple of operatives outside, but not a lot of live actors. Mind you, they've been doing some live actor stuff across the, across the last few years, so uh, it wouldn't surprise me either way. Uh, but it would be interesting to see whether they do go along with the live actors and bring them back in um, You know despite how much that might cost etc uh, But of course the question is still over it's still hanging above us as to whether Subterra is going to return anyway So um, for me this is an extra step that something will happen in this building Whether it's Subterra or a brand new scare maze in October I'm not too sure yet, but I would like to lean towards more the fact that Subterra will return next season. Not this season, but next season. So uh, let's have a look at some more work being done around the Alton Towers Resort ahead of the opening day of the season. So a couple of extra updates. So first of all, there's been a lot of winter work across the park, including new tarmac and fences. Now these wooden fences have been installed along with a brand new dark blue bin. Now if you're unfamiliar of where this area is, this is basically the shortcut that one side leads towards X sector, which from my understanding I believe will be closed on opening day because of the Smilers maintenance. Is Oblivion going to be ready or Enterprise? I'm not too sure. Um, but X sector is on one side or towards X sector is on one side. On the other side is sort of going towards Spinball Wizard and the whole conference center like 
white dome thing um, that's you know I think it's like a temporary tent thing uh, that was like there etc like some some kind of conference building and you got so you got spinball wizard right near it so um, you know it, it's that sort of shortcut it used to be the um, freak show scare zone a few years back at Scarefest um, before they turned it into toxic junkyard a couple of, uh, like a year or two ago for Scarefest so uh, somewhere else so for me I think you know it's nice to see some permanent fencing now finally let's go over to dark forest for one of the retro squad so finally in your old towers updates from tower street roller disco is back for another year now i didn't get to do the retro squad last year so it'd be nice to do a couple of the retro squad attractions now of course there are only two coming back now this this is the reason why i didn't want to do a separate video on the retro squad coming back when it was announced weeks ago is because I wanted to wait until final preparations for Alton Towers, do a video on that and bring this into it. So for those of you who don't already know, uh, the Retro Squad last year was a collection of three temporary flat rides, uh, fairground flat rides. You had the mixtape, the locator where submission was in X Sector. You had the f uh, um, Funk and Fly, which is located where Ripsaw was in Forbidden Valley. And you also have... Uh, of course, the Roller Disco, which is located where part of the Ugg Swinger used to be in the old Ugland, which is now known as Dark Forest, when Corkscrew was ripped out and 13 was put in. Now, Roller Disco is coming back, Funk and Fly is coming back, but Mixtape is not, uh, to my understanding. Now, obviously, it is a shame to see no Mixtape, however... Um, maybe they've got plans for that submission site permanently. Maybe that's the first of the permanent flat rides they're going to add in the future. Who knows? But um, but yeah, we have two of the Retro Squad coming back. Uh, now, it's unsure. Now, it wasn't part of the Retro Squad, but I don't know if Flavio's Fantastic Fandango is coming back. Someone will have to comment down below on that one, whether that's coming back in Williams World or not. I might be wrong, I might be right. Uh, if so, it'd be nice to experience one of those scrambler flat rides. Uh, but overall... Roller Disco coming back, uh, classic Walter attraction, improves the ride lineup, the flat ride lineup, especially at the park, uh, which has been lacking for a good few years now, in my opinion. And of course, Funk and Fly coming back as well, which is nice, a nice popular attraction, especially during the, the busy summer period. So overall, with the Roller Disco coming back and the Funk and Fly coming back, it is very, very exciting indeed. But that is all the preparation for Alton Towers going into the start of the season. Now let's share my thoughts. It's a week to go before the opening day. I cannot wait. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill 6 of all ages. That is speaking about Alton Towers and the final prep work for the opening day of the season. There was also a post by Tower Street um, saying there's only like seven days to go until the park opens. Um, and that had like a photo of Wickerman as well. And Wickerman looks pretty good as well. Go, go and check that out on the Facebook page as well. Like I said, the social media links for Tower Street, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, they're all linked down below. Um, and yeah, this is very exciting. It's very exciting. It's nice to see all the prep work being done. Like I said, the CBB's attractions aren't my target market. However, I am a theme, a fr well, freelance at the moment, but I am a theme park critic. Any attractions, thrill, family, kids, any attractions that I can go on, I will. any new attractions I can go on, I will review them. You know, I go in there with the right mindset, you know, let's use, um, let's use the dinosaur dig for example. Let's use that as an example. That is targeted at the younger kids. If I was to go in there and review that attraction, I would think, right, what do I look for in a kid's attraction? Is it playful? Is it imaginable? What kind of attraction it is? Is it just fun for all ages? Is it just interactive learning through play? And... You know, if I've got the opportunity to do these new attractions in CBB Land, I will do them because I need to review them for the channel. Now, obviously, there's some other stuff to look out for on this trip uh, next week. Nemesis of Terror work. I'll try and get some footage of Nemesis of Terror on the day. Um, see what work's going on around there. Um, you know, what's happening to the site, etc. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be for this year. If anything, it'll be for 2023 while the refurbishment works. Nemesis is going to be going on. That's going to be a major highlight of the trip uh, next week. Getting on Nemesis as much as possible because it could be my last year for a good year, uh, for a whole 12 months before I get to ride Nemesis again. So, 
try and get Nemesis as much as possible, try and get as much of the original ride experience as much as possible before the whole rechecking happens and see what happens there. But um, overall, I think Alt Towers are really starting to prep now. Now, in terms of ride availability for the opening day of the season, like I said, I believe the Smiler will still be closed uh, because they're still doing some extra technical maintenance on it. Whether Oblivion and Enterprise are the same, I'm not too sure. I, don't, I think are they going to close the whole of X Sector. I don't know for sure. Comment down below. I know some. I know Alton Towers. I think replied to someone saying they might close the whole of X Sector, or I think they are going to close the whole of X Sector for the opening day. So um, I could be wrong. Could be right. If so, then it is sad, of course. But um, you know, we do move on. Um, it gives me an excuse to come back to Alton Towers. You know, we've got the events going on like Mardi Gras and Oktoberfest and Scarefest. So it gives me more reason to come back to Alton Towers more times throughout the year to go and experience Oblivion, experience Smiler, do, do the Enterprise again. Um, any new stuff, anything new things that get announced at the park, we'll try and look at some construction work. So there's more excuses to go and do Alton Towers a lot more times throughout this year if I can get the time off work. Fingers crossed. Um, but um, but yeah, Alton Towers is a go-to park, you know, multiple times throughout the year with the different events they've got on, like I said. So, um, you know, I can't wait for the opening day of the season. Hope to see as many people there. Blackpool Pleasure Beach opening day was amazing, as I've already said in my trip review and throughout the vlog. Um... I believe Jack Silkstone might be there. I'm not too sure though. I think I don't know. I think he might be going to Thorpe Park opening weekend on the Saturday next week. So um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hope he enjoys it. I, I'm still deciding what I want to do because I've got two weeks off work now. I'm, I'm going to do Alton Towers on the first weekend, but throughout the second week, I want to try and do a couple of different theme parks. So I want to try and travel to a couple of different theme parks throughout the second week I'm off so you know I am listing a couple of parks or quite a few parks actually uh, Flamingolands on the agenda I want to try and do Thought Park this year uh, Chessington for my first time ever I know people are going to be screaming at the camera like you've not done Chessington yet what is wrong with you I need to get it done try and get the classic vampire coaster done the Gruffalo River Ride Adventure Dragon's Fury see the work going on with the new coaster for next year the new shuttle B&M launched wing coaster um, yeah uh, Chessington's a go-to park for me hopefully this year Thought Park as well Legoland Windsor's changed a hell of a lot since I was last there in 2005 2004 to 2005 so again that's a go-to park for this year if it is a family park um, there's so many go-to parks this year in the UK Fantasy Island in Skagness again that's another park that I want to try and do this year Poulton's Park yes it's right at the bottom of the country but I do not give a rat's backside they've got some fantastic areas some fantastic rides and it's Arguably one of the best theme parks in the UK right now. So again, that's another go-to park hope for this year It's hard to try and get as many parts done this year as possible, especially in the UK But you know, obviously hopefully fingers crossed if all goes to plan in April Fire up Summerland in Denmark for the new coast of Phoenix um, We'll see what happens with that what what the opening day is for that um, If I do go abroad in April, it'll be the first time I go abroad in 16 years first time flying so I'm scared, but also looking forward to it. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff coming, hopefully, this year if all goes to plan. So, fingers crossed and keep your eyes out for more details. Um, and I hope to see as many people throughout the year as much as possible. But that is going to be it, guys. We're looking so far ahead into the future right now. We're looking at Halloween events. We're looking at theme park events in different months. But the next one is literally seven days away. Six, seven days away, and that's Alton Towns Resort opening day. So please, like the video if you loved it, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, subscribe if you're new around here, click the notification bell to see every YouTube video. Thank you very, very much for watching this video on the final prep work done at Alton Towers for the opening day in literally a week's time. Um, like I said, hope to see so many of you down there at Alton Towers opening day. And for now, my name is Coast Shell. Keep living the coast alive. I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a Towers-tastic day. Come on, Towers. Knock it out of the park this year.